Good day, Junior Tickies. I'm Mrs. Brimago. We are going to look now at Chapter 11, Value Added Tax. Value Added Tax, that is equal to 15%. Before we start with the activity, we're just going to go through some basics. It is imperative that you study your concepts. Know what is the difference between standard rate, zero rated items and VAT exempted items. A reminder, zero rated items, VAT is charged but at 0%. VAT exempted items, no VAT is charged. You need to understand how to calculate VAT. If we look at the following, calculating the VAT if VAT exclusive is given. Calculate VAT if VAT inclusive is given. The amount excluding VAT is equal to 100. Plus 15% VAT means that the amount including is equal to 115%. This is now a case of what is it that I want to calculate? over what has been given to me. So if I want to calculate the VAT and the amount excluding is given, we say times 15 divided by 100. If I want to calculate the VAT and the amount including is given, then we need to say times 15 divided by 115. So you need to make sure that you study this and just follow that concept of what is it that I want to calculate over what has been given to me. Amount excluding is always equal to 100 plus that which is 15 equals amount including which is always equal to 115. It will be expected of you to calculate do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us. So if we look at that output and that input that output is that collected. Whatever we collect, that money doesn't belong to us. That money belongs to SARS. Therefore, that output is regarded as a liability. If we look at that input, that input is that paid on items purchase. That money, we can actually claim that from SARS if we are a registered that vendor. Reminder, it's a compulsory to register if our annual turnover is more than 1 million. Otherwise, you can volunteer to register if your annual turnover is more than 50,000. So if we're looking at our journals, we have our cash journals, the cash receipts journal, cash payment journal, petty cash journal. We have our credit journals, debtors journal, creditors journal, returns journals, debtors allowance journal, creditors allowance journal, and then we have the general journal where we take everything else. You need to identify which one of those journals will have that input and that output. And then you need to post that to the VAT input account and to the VAT output account. So these accounts you can study. Make sure that you understand them 100%. When we look now at the end of the month, we're going to take that output and we're going to post it to the VAT control account. The same as with that input, it's posted to the VAT control account. Now we can calculate do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us? If we have a credit balance, it means that we owe SARS and then it's regarded as a current liability. If we have a debit balance, it means SARS owes us, then it's regarded as a current asset. That returns must be submitted by monthly, which means every second month. Activity 1. This activity is going to focus on some theory questions and then calculations of that, determining do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us. If we look at transactions, we start with amount owed by SARS on 30 April 2022. 
and then transactions for the period from May to June 2022. Question 1.1. Explain the difference between VAT input and VAT output. VAT input, VAT paid on goods and services bought for the business. If we look at VAT output, VAT charge collected on goods sold in the business. 1.2. Explain the meaning of each of the following. Zero rated VAT and VAT exempted. Zero rated basic essential items on which the VAT rate is 0%. VAT is charged, but it's 0%. VAT exempted items that by law have no VAT levied on it. Question 1.3. Calculate the amount owed by SARS on 30 June 2022. In other words, do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us? We start with the amount owed by SARS on 30 June 2022, 4,586. So this will be our first entry. It's the amount owed by SARS, therefore that input plus 4,000 586. It is very important that you show every single time plus or minus. To calculate sales, they provided you with that exclusive 480,000. We have to calculate the VAT amount and the VAT inclusive. Why do we need the VAT amount? Because we need to determine Will this be shown in VAT input or VAT output? Starting with the calculations, it's the amount excluding times 15 divided by 100 if I want to calculate the VAT. Now, this is money collected. That's why VAT output will be credited, which means we owe that money to SARS. 72,000. Make sure that you write plus because that money is owed. To calculate the VAT including, we're going to take VAT excluding times 115 divided by 100. And that equals VAT inclusive. You could have also calculated that by taking 480,000 plus the 72,000. It will give you exactly the same answer. Number two, Equipment purchase, it means on items purchase, that input is, is involved because we can claim that money from SARS. Now, what have they provided me with? They provided me with the VAT amount, which means we have to say plus 2,100. To calculate the VAT including, we can take the VAT amount times 115 divided by 15 equals 16,100. Now we can take VAT excluding equals the VAT amount times 100 divided by 15. Or you could have take 16,100 minus, it will provide you with exactly the same answer. If we look at the next one, merchandise purchased, it means items purchase, VAT input. That money can be claimed if we are a registered VAT vendor. They provided you with the VAT inclusive amount, 220800 To calculate the VAT amount, we have to say times 15 divided by 115. That means we're going to say plus 28800 To calculate VAT exclusive, take the VAT including times 100 divided by 115. Again, alternatively, if you take that inclusive minus the VAT amount, it will give you exactly the same answer. Returns by debtors. Remember when we're selling goods on credit, invoice base means that we must pay over that money to sales. But now, those items are returned by the debtors. We no longer owe that money to source. This is why that output will now be debited with 5,400. 
They provided you with the VAT amount, so we need to say minus 5,400. In accounting, remember, minus must be shown or it can be shown in accounting in brackets. To calculate now the VAT excluding, if the VAT amount is given, we are going to take 100 times 100 divided by 15. To calculate the VAT inclusive, we can take the VAT amount times 115 divided by 15, or we could have said VAT plus VAT exclusive equals VAT inclusive. Bad debts written off. Again, when we're selling goods on credit, that money is owed to SARS. We're using invoice-based. Now, if we're not going to collect that money, we're no longer entitled to play, pay that money over to SARS. What this basically mean is I can get a reduction in the amount which I owe SARS. If we can prove that we've done everything that we could to try to collect that money, and now we've decided that we are going to write this off as bad debts. So we don't expect that money to come in. This is why that output will be debited. They provided you with the excluding VAT. So to calculate the VAT amount, we have to take times 15 divided by 100. That means we're going to say minus 1,550 in that output. To calculate VAT inclusive, if the VAT excluding amount is given, take 115 divided by 100. Alternatively, take the excluding VAT plus the VAT output equals VAT inclusive. Discount allowed to debtors. Discount allowed to debtors means that debtors paid less for early settlement of account. This means that we need to adjust our VAT output because we are going to collect less money. So less money is owed to SARS. This is why discount allowed will always appear on the debit side of that output. If it's on the debit side, it means that my liabilities will decrease. They provided you with the VAT inclusive. To find the VAT amount, we now have to say times 15 divided by 115. That means minus 6,150. To find the VAT excluding, if the VAT including is given, we have to say times 100 divided by 115. Alternatively, if you've calculated the VAT amount and you are given VAT inclusive, you can subtract the VAT and that equals the VAT exclusive. Returns to creditors. When we purchase items, then VAT input is debited because we are entitled to claim that VAT if we are registered as a VAT vendor. But now, when we return those items to our suppliers, we cannot claim the VAT because we've returned those items. Therefore, that input needs to be credited. They provided me with the VAT inclusive, so if I want to calculate the VAT, I need to say times 15 divided by 115. That means that you need to show minus 6,750 under that input. If the VAT inclusive amount is given and I want to calculate the VAT exclusive, we are going to say times 115 divided by 100. Sorry, my apologies. We are going to say 100 divided by 115. Alternatively, if you've got VAT inclusive and you've calculated the VAT amount, just take including VAT minus VAT equals excluding VAT. Once we've done with this, we can now total our VAT input. Make sure that you take the opening balance that was given to you 
sauce owes us, so you include that. Plus plus minus equals that output seventy two thousand minus 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 equals. Now, if I take that output minus that input, that means that we owe sauce thirty thousand one hundred and eighty four. This is payable to sales. If you balance that output, the credit, balance that input, the debit, remember the opening balance. So in other words, we take the opening balance plus what we owe sales minus that input that equals the same amount again. So the opening balance, remember it was that input, money owed to SARS. So if you take that output minus that input minus what SARS owes us right in the beginning, you will get exactly the same answer. Question 1.4. The owner of Pizza Traders wants to write off more bad debts than they actually are. Why do you think the owner has suggested this course of action? Explain briefly. So this is FX incorporated into that. He can claim money back from SARS and thus reduce the amount paid. This means that he will have more cash available. This is why he wants to add more than what it actually is with regards to bad debts. He wants to claim more money back. What action can be taken against the owner and the accountant if he decides to follow through with the owner's request? It is unethical to cheat SARS. Everybody needs to pay their correct debt. The owner and the accountant could face fines and or be jailed or sentenced if caught by SARS. It is unethical behavior. You are not allowed to do that. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to look at activity two, where we're going to focus more on that calculations, that input, that output. Do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us? I want to leave you with this quote: "The more you practice, the better you get." Have a wonderful day.